In this video, I'm going to use Gitras version tracking to do simple patch diffing. To this end, I have two different versions of libpng and between these two versions, this CVE has been fixed. And now I'm trying to use Ghidra to extract the changes introduced by the fix for that CVE. But we will also unfortunately see that while patch diffing works for that specific example, Gidra's version tracking is not ready yet for general patch diffing purposes. So I've already selected my source and destination program and I'm going to start a version tracking session now. And I'm going to select the following correlators because I'm only interested in functions that change. I will only select function correlators and also I will only select the exact function bytes, instruction and mnemonic matches, then the exact symbol name match. This is because the binaries that I'm comparing actually have symbols in them. And this is also the only re reason why this patch diff works in Ghidra. If you have a binary that does not have any symbol names in it, then doing patch diffing with Ghidra is currently very difficult. Then I will also select the duplicate function instruction match and I will use the default settings. And now we have our version tracking matches up here. And the problem currently with Ghidra is that all the correlators that are available in Ghidra they can only detect functions that are very similar to each other, that are almost identical. What Ghidra is really bad at is matching functions that have code block changes. So for example, if we have another if clause within that function, then the Ghidra correlator would not match these functions up here at all. So you have a problem finding those functions that have changes in them. And this is exactly what we're trying to find here. We're trying to find a function that has been patched. But we can work around that by first excluding all the functions that are still identical. For example, this function that we opened right here, nothing has changed from one version to the other. So obviously the patch we're looking for isn't in this function, so we can exclude that function. And to get this working for all the functions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter the results and I'm going to only select the exact function bytes, exact function instruction matches, mnemonic matches, and then the duplicate function instruction match. So I'm now going to apply this. And now I only get presented functions that are identical. If we look down here, we see that there is no code changes between these functions. And Gitra doesn't find any functions that have a score below one here with the currently available in, uh, with the currently available correlators anyway. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to select all and then I'm going to hit accept. And now all these functions are now in the status accepted. And what I can now do is I can exclude these accepted functions from our selection. And I'm going to only select the exact symbol name match. What I then also need to filter out is blocked matches. These are functions that already have a match, but they also have a correlator that says there's another function that this could match. So for example, let's just apply it like that. And then we, we see, for example, this, this function here, or let's take this, the png get bkgd function, Gidra says, hey, this looks similar to the s bit function. And if we look at the code, we see that these functions are actually identical. So logically, the correlator says, hey, 
these two functions match. However, this function is already matched up with another function via a different correlator. And hence, the status here is blocked because this function has already been accepted in another uh, correlator match. And so we can also filter out these. You know, what that leaves us are now functions that have identical names. That means these are the same functions, but that are not identical in their code. And you can see it here. The turquoise color here indicates where changes have happened. And now we can go through these functions and find where the patch we're looking for is happening or happened. Now, what you oftentimes will see is little compiler differences. For example, here we have a comparison where they compare the register value against three. And here they compare a memory location against three. And if you further analyze the code, then you will realize that this is actually identical code, but here the compiler uses a register to store this value. And here the compiler actually uses a text storage for the variable. So we can now disregard this function because the patch is not in here. And then we would go to the next function and look at what is patched in here. And here we see it's basically the same thing. There is some rearrangement going on here. For example, if you look at the EDX, the XOR of EDX down here, this is actually just moved up here. And hence, the function seems to be changed. And then we have this instruction here, which is down here in the other movement. So the compiler basically has reordered these instructions because these instructions are independent from each other. So you don't have to execute them in a specific order. The compiler has, in the one case on the left, has arranged them in this order. And in the other case, the compiler arranged them in the other order. This can be because maybe these were compiled by different compilers with different compiler settings. And eventually, when we look through all this, we come across this function. And if we look at this function, we see that there are more changes. There's, for example, this complete block here that is missing from the other function. And there is another block cannot be explained by the compiler simply rearranging instructions around. So if we then get this function in the decompile view and we analyze it, we realize that, for example, this code block here is identical to the code block down here. And this is another problem with currently the Ghidra version tracking. It doesn't really have li like a good differ. It just has the lines over here and the lines over there, but you don't see any correlation, at least in the decompile view. In the listings view, what you have is that on identical instructions, you can click on them, for example, here, and then it goes to that same location in the other binary where it has matched it up. For example, it has matched this gray block up with this here over there. If I click here, then it says, yeah, I've matched this up over there. All in all, it seems that this whole version tracking is only to get your uh, markup items. That is in case you renamed some functions or changed function signatures that you can port them over to new versions without you having to do any manual work. But looking further into that function, we then also see that this code up here is identical to that, that code. Then we have this check here, which is identical to the check down here. They just swap the 
condition here and we also have this check here which is the same check as this again with the condition swap so basically some rearrangement is taking place here but the real change is that th this check is added and what this check does it makes sure that the parameter 4 that is given to the function fulfills some specific requirements for example the parameter if the parameter is smaller than zero then that is an error and also the parameter must be bigger than parameter to some some value in what appears to be a structure given by a pointer in parameter 2 and the parameter 4 has to be bigger than that value and if that is not the case then there will be an error this is not present in the old version everything else is present in the old version so yeah that is the patch and you would then look up and see what is parameter 4 and how you can reach that point by calling the library now while that seems now it's pretty doable and it obviously works this only works because we have the function names in case we would now not have any function names here what we would need to do is we would need to go into the version tracking functions and then we could show only the unaccepted matches because obviously we could still filter out functions that are identical in both binaries however we would still be left with these functions and now in case we wouldn't have any names what we now would need to do is we would now need to compare the functions on the left with functions on the right and find which function corresponds to which other function so yeah that's how you can in theory do patch diffing with the Ghidra version tracking but the problem really is that there is no correlator that does fuzzy matching between um, functions because if there was a correlator that did fuzzy matching what you could do is you could look for functions that have a score that is below one here so you could say ah there's a function that matches to 80 percent with the other function and then you could look into these function matches more quickly than doing a comparison for all the functions here with all the other functions here because you wouldn't have any names so i really hope that in the future more correlators will be added to this that make the job easier but until then this is what you can expect from version tracking in Ghidra with respect to patch diffing and hope somebody found this video useful.